go ahead and roll insight. Howdy folks, I'm Dabas Volt, and welcome to Rolling Insight, the Dungeons & Dragons series where I give you some insight on topics for the world's greatest role-playing game. So, the thought dawned on me that, as someone creating content for the internet, specifically for Dungeons & Dragons, even more specifically for helping individuals get into both playing and mastering Dungeons & Dragons, that I skipped a crucial part of the introduction process to Dungeons & Dragons, actually introducing Dungeons & Dragons. So. That is going to be the emphasis for this video, taking you from someone who maybe heard about Dungeons & Dragons through a friend or seeing it recommended on your FYP, to someone who understands the concept of Dungeons & Dragons and is interested in learning more. So, if you're ready, let's descend the rabbit hole of TTRPG to answer the question, what is Dungeons & Dragons? Dungeons & Dragons is a fantasy tabletop role-playing game created by Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson in 1974, making this game almost 10 years older than a Nintendo Entertainment System. The original idea behind Dungeons & Dragons came from another TTRPG named Chainmail, where players would command entire armies in epic battles against one another, similar to the Warhammer we have today. The original rules for D&D were actually derived from the modified version of Chainmail, meaning the true first edition of D&D was homebrewed, or created outside of the established rule system. Gygax's idea for D&D came from the thought of controlling individual foot soldiers in the army, creating character sheets for them and exploring as this individual adventurer. The main goal of this version of D&D, as well as the first publication of the rules in 1974, was to go on epic adventures into dungeons where you would fight, you guessed it, dragons, and after defeating these scaled hellish horrors, you would bathe in their hordes and live long lives to tell the tales of your adventuring past. With this version, however, there weren't the ideas you commonly see today of character development or even role-playing. Crazy, right? A role-playing game with no role-play. Well, you have to remember, this game came off the backs of war games where role-play wasn't really a big thing. It was a game of tactics and fighting to beat the odds which were always heavily stacked against you. I mean, you're talking about basically peasants who stumbled into a dungeon of some great mythical beast that could breathe fires big and hot enough to give Mount Doom performance anxiety. As we know, of course, D&D evolved since the 70s to become this gaming phenomena that it is today, with millions worldwide sitting down at tables and tuning into live streams to experience the fascinating games of D&D we play today. But why? Why do we dedicate multiple hours every week to play this game of basically pretend with rules? Why do we buy these expensive things like large tomes and shiny rocks for doing math and small people that we paint? Why do people become obsessed with their characters and suddenly become professional actors when they play? Well, the ones you see here usually are professional actors, but that's beside the point. Why why? Why do we do this? Why do we play this game? Well, because it's fun. Alright. I know that seems like a dumb answer to a question like that, but it's the truth. We find joy in pretending to be someone else for a few hours a week and living vicariously through them in this fictional world crafted specifically for the fing phone! Damn it! Crafted specifically for them to be challenged and overcome those challenges. We enjoy the feeling of completing godlike feats for the same reason we love watching people in movies or reading characters in stories do the same thing. Seeing these things happen, whether it's on a screen or in a book or happening right in front of you, is awesome. Do you remember the feeling you got in Avengers Endgame when Captain America picked up Mjolnir and swung it at Thanos, summoning lightning and slamming Mjolnir against his shield, and then everyone came through the Doctor Strange portals and Cap recalled Mjolnir to his hand and told the Avengers to assemble? Do you remember how hyped you were when this happens? That feeling of being able to conquer the world and being invincible? That's the same rush we get from the cool things we do in D&D. That feeling of being untouchable and awesome. And also because it's hilarious to watch people roll badly and listen to the Dungeon Master or DM's description of the Three Stooges style fumble the character goes through. That's D&D. Exploring a world with friends full of challenges and stories to be told and overcome. Finding extraordinary adventures in the most peculiar of places. A new hand touches the- No! 
god! You'd be surprised just how easy it is to get pulled into a Fae Millennium Ward just by overturning the funny looking rock with the blue glowing algae. By this point, if you're not at least somewhat interested in learning more about Dungeons and Dragons, then either I have failed or it's just not for you. The latter of which is totally okay. But if you truly don't have any interest in D&D by this point, allow me just one more chance before you close this browser tab and continue on with your life. Close your eyes and imagine with me if you will. I'm serious, close your eyes and use your imagination. You're walking along a pathway, traveling in solitude on a beaten path in a lush forest. Surrounding you is the visions of sturdy oak pillars topped with roofs of green leaves, the ground covered in blades of flowing grass with the occasional forest critter scampering by, passing with a brief glance as they continue on with their lives, independent of yours. To them, you stand as a formidable sight, an upright creature clad in iron, strapped with leather with a piercing gaze, focused on traveling to your destination. Your senses of sight and smell are graced with the comforting perception of a local inn, a comfortable night's rest, much better than unrolling your pelt blanket and braving the cold nights in the wilderness. You enter to the sound of conversation contested with merry music, a haven of community on this lonely path. It's warmer in here than out there. You find a seat at the bar, where you're greeted by a woman holding the place up. She offers you a bowl of soup, a meaty broth mixed with shredded beef, potatoes, and carrots. You pay for the meal plus some extra for a warm bed for the night. You hoist the spoon to your face and feel the warmth of it before you even open your mouth. Your nose is graced with the scent of spices and broth. The spoon enters and you taste a dish made with fresh ingredients and a love only possible in a place like this, a stray inn placed off the beaten path. You finish your meal and retire to personal quarters for the night. You bathe yourself for the first time in weeks, scrubbing clean all the sweat and grease from your body and clothes, and you find your place in your bed. You review your journal by the side of a single candle, adding notes from today's adventure. You place your journal back in your pouch and snuff the flame, turning over in your bed, and the light of a thousand stars enters as the infinite cosmos peers into your room, and you find yourself at a peaceful rest. That, right there, that brain massage you just experienced, that give or take minute where you were somewhere and someone else in a different world where the worries of your world don't exist, that's why we play D&D. Now, this isn't what happens all the time, but those are the moments we play for. That transportation, that suspense of disbelief, what some might call immersion, but I call freedom. It's a freedom of worldly burdens, of chores and tasks that are overdue and underdone. It's becoming someone you want to be and doing the things you want to do. If you don't believe me, Look at the statistics. D&D had a massive boom in popularity during the pandemic. Why? Because life really sucked for a lot of people, and people found an escape from their sucky lives in this fantasy game you could play with friends, where you were interacting in whatever way you wanted, not restrained by code and inputs, but by your own imagination. Most importantly, this game offered something we didn't have a lot of during that scary time in human history. That very same freedom. Whew, that was a lot, but we covered some history of D&D, why we play D&D, and hopefully I've gotten you at least somewhat interested in learning more about D&D. I'll be posting videos soon covering how to start playing D&D, and in the meantime, you can check out my Mastering the Dungeon video to learn more about DMing and why we play this game. Spoiler alert, it's because it's fun. While you're exploring my channel, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content like this. I post every Monday, so be sure to hit that bell to be notified and stay up to date with my content. And if I didn't fully answer your question, or you have a different one, or even you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. In any case, I'll see y'all next time. We roll insight. Have a good one.